So for example, I've got this. And I've got Then I go And I throw the other punch that's usually associated with this, right? Punching people. They don't really like it very much. Please punch me. Please punch me. But he just won't do it. So what we tend to do is block punches, obviously, right? Do we start working on feints or combinations to figure out how we can better make sure we land those punches. So today we're gonna to talk about is not just regular feints, but what I like to call hard feints. Like that's very obviously me fainting. That's very obviously me fainting to throw this front hand, right? Boom because this hand is moving towards the target. Now we're going hands only. Ah, geez, I hit my fucking glove. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can faint punches in ways other than like a really hard faint. So method number one is what I like to call throwing a shoulder, okay? So a lot of the times when you fight somebody and what's usually taught, especially like in basketball and, and sports where the movement is not just with your hands, but it's also with your hands and feet. Basketball, think about it, you're taking a lot of steps. You're told to keep your eyes on the center of the body or the hips. When I spar, I usually look at about the solar plexus because it gives me peripherals on the hands and the feet. So as I'm going, ah, I'm not gonna throw this hand, I'm going to push this shoulder forwards. Now it's not a ton of movement and it takes movement throughout everything else in order to sell it, but it's enough that usually you can, if somebody's parrying a bunch and if somebody's biting on a lot of stuff or they're slipping or they're parrying a bunch, this can sometimes be enough where you can get a flinch or a hesitation for just enough to go bop, come to the other side, bop, make them parry, and then throw your own punch afterward. Now, with that being said, as I'm doing this, I have to make sure that I'm not throwing it and then leaving myself vulnerable. So if I'm throwing that shoulder and it looks like I'm gonna throw this punch, make sure that you're not just sitting here, bop, and leaving it. You're going, huh, just kind of staying diligent about going bop, maybe I'm gonna go bop, you know, whatever it is, making sure that you're not just going, uh, and then leaving it there, like really over showing it, boom, being obvious. All the feints are about small movements that sell. Bah. Bah. Number two is gonna be the old C-Max special, the Conor McGregor, it's not really just him that does it, a lot of people do it, but what they do is they put the shoulder forwards. You can classify this as more of a different look rather than a feint, but I'm gonna put it under a soft feint. It's a different look, yes. It's a way you can give a different look. But I like it regardless, and it's important information you can use, so whatever. So what I'm doing here is I am playing around and making this seem like this is my front hand, my longest target. But in all actuality, this is. is by putting the shoulder, and it's kind of, it's not quite the same as throwing a shoulder, because I have my looks, I have my looks from this stance. What I'm doing now is I'm, Kind of changing my sense of it. The more I talk about it, the less I think it's a faint, but still, I'm talking about it. Might as well put it in the video. So I'm showing this look here where this is my longest range. Once somebody gets comfortable with your longest range, they start to test it and play with it. As they start to test and play with it, then I'm going to react. So if I'm fighting somebody here, they're going to stay at this range, right? But now I'm going to fight them here. They're going to come in to this range, or they'll let me come into this range. And as I'm here, I'm touching their hand, I'm touching whatever. That's when you throw that jab, that long, powerful, you can be here, right? And square up a little bit more and throw that jab like a cross. Or you can square up a little bit more and really put more power into it and be here right? and really throw your body into that one. But it's a feint of the mind. It's a switching stance. I'm gonna keep it in here anyway. Level change, level change. Make a habit of every time you punch the body, coming down, sitting down on that shot. And then eventually what you can do is you can throw feints or literally, I just change my body level. You see wrestlers get away with this all the time because they're constantly worried about sprawling and defending that take that. So as I'm here, this is one that I do all the time. Literally, I just take this front foot and go like this, boop. And it's not a big step, boop. But it's enough that my body goes like this, boop. And now, you're more so worried about this. Or you might even get to the point where I faint this so much that your hands come up when I do this, because every time I go like this. Uh, 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 and now you're confused because my body's lower, but my hands are higher. So I think now, after a while, you can get used to playing with somebody's emotions. And as you're doing this, you're going like this, and you're throwing like random stuff, and your body level changes, and you're throwing all these feints, and somebody's just kind of like, okay, his 
body is at my body, but its hands are up here. Then you can throw stuff up your own. Long story short, this here can go a long way if you're doing a good job of level changing and throwing shots to the body. If your body shots look like this, you're not gonna get away with anything. Because yes, you might like land one or two every now and then like this, because nobody's expecting you to go to the body, but you have to show before you can take away. You have to give somebody a pattern before you can break the pattern, right? Everybody has their like set footwork that they do. So that, this is usually associated with a cross. Uh, this movement here, this is usually a jab. Hook punch usually goes like that, right? You, you have like these cues of when somebody's gonna throw something or somebody's gonna wind up and throw something the opposite direction. We can use that to our advantage, right? So I'm here, um, focusing on that jab, and now I'm not throwing much, but my foot is moving, and by moving my feet, I'm using enough to trigger an emotion or a reaction from him because he recognizes the pattern and wants to stop that pattern short because he or she then recognizes the pattern that you've given them. Right? Now, so if I want to throw this cross and I really want to throw it, and I've thrown a lot of lead hooks, and, and they've been leaning that way, right? Every time I throw this hook, bang, they've been kind of sitting on it. Uh, now, boom, I just want them to throw that hand up, so I go boom, bang, and I go, here, hey, stop. So if I really want to throw this cross and land this cross, then maybe I'll fake this knee once or twice, bang, bang, and throw my second punch, boom. What I like to do a lot is go like this, and act like this jab is coming, and then throw a backhand cross, which usually finds its way right down the pipe. Bang. And usually when I take the step, it usually either looks like I'm flowing this way enough that a punch can come, either an overhand or a cross can come from the opposite direction. So we can take advantage of things that people see, right? All of the things that we talked about before are something people see. We can take advantage of things people feel, like a push-pull, like if I'm like this, I've got somebody, and if I want to pull them, I push, and usually what the natural reaction is to push back push pull it makes life a little bit easier that's kind of a feeling that's a touch so you've got eyes looking you've got touch one thing that's kind of underrated and i'll make a probably a whole different video on this is the sense of taste dante will go down what was he what just doing feet? with his tongue right there no it's 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 sad okay so for example i'm just gonna go like pop 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 and what that does is it you go pop, 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 and you make that sound, 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 whatever your sound is, I don't care. But if you make that sound every time you throw the jab, usually when somebody hears that, they're expecting then that corresponding movement. Then you can start to go a little bit before, okay, now that person's used to going, hearing the sound, okay, punch coming, bang, hearing the sound, punch coming, bang. Now, I've played with this a lot in Spark, and it honestly has some merit to it. And maybe it's like a build-up sound. Kind of like old school karate. But once you have that build-up sound, people are like, oh, recognize it. Incoming. Then you go. So people are looking for that front hand. So for example, I've got this. And I've got then I go, and I throw the other punch that's usually associated with this, right? This is something that you can very much pull off if you have the conscious mind during sparring over and over and over and over again. There's way crazier things that people pull off. This is one of those things that's viable and not a lot of people are doing. And like I mentioned, I'll probably make a whole nother video on it. I don't know, I feel like I'm doing a decent job explaining it now. If you've watched this far in the video, props to you, one. Two, I hope this works for you. If you want more explanation, leave a comment and I'll figure it out. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this and you want more karate tricks, if you want bottle kicks, if you want wave master reviews, if you want Hayabusa gear, because you boys, you boys are faster now. We're doing, we're doing influencer things. We're kicking stuff with, with stuff that was given to us. Bang! You know what I mean? But no, for real, that stuff's dope. I, I'm super excited about that whole thing. And it couldn't have happened if it wasn't for you guys, so thanks. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, If you want to learn how to kick stuff, specifically side kick stuff, or you want to learn how to spin a rear, and learn how to actually dig in to your opponent, you should come to the seminar at Icy Mike's location 
RKM. It'll be March 7th, and I think we're almost packed there. But I'll also be teaching 